if you are comfortable with the concepts of a non-deterministic versus a deterministic finite automata, but are not comfortable converting from one to the other, maybe we can clear things up with a quick example. A couple of episodes ago, we presented a non-deterministic finite automata that was supposed to detect from the binary alphabet the regular expression, let's see, 0, 1, star, 0, or 1, all right? And so the regular set that was generated from that regular expression, every element had to start with a 0. And then there could be any number of ones between that zero and a final zero or one. Items that might have been in this regular set would be anything that starts with a zero. So all the sequences had to start with a zero. Then we may have no ones followed by a zero or a one. So zero, zero was an element. Zero, one was an element. And then between that first digit and that last digit, we could have any number of ones. So we could have zero, one, zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, 20 ones and a zero, or we could have zero, one followed by a one. So as long as we started with a zero, ended with a zero or a one, and had some number of, of concatenated ones in between it, we had, a we had an element of that regular set. So what does our finite state automata look like? Well, we're gonna do the diagram first. I'm gonna start out Q0, that's our initial state. So before we get any bits, before we get any bits from this string, we're gonna start out in Q0. Now, the very first element that we're looking for on our path to finding an element that is a member or a string that's a member of our regular set, the very first thing we have to do is get a zero. That zero is gonna bring us to Q1. After we've got that zero, then what we're looking for is any number of ones. So it could be zero ones or it could be a thousand ones. But that's gonna give us this little loop here that says, okay, as long as we keep getting ones, we're gonna stay in this state that says, okay, we're waiting for the final bit. And that final bit is gonna take us to our final state, Q2, and that final bit's gonna be either a zero or a one. And so this is our complete state diagram to detect that regular expression. But that's not the only way that we can represent this state machine. Remember, we can represent the state machine with our state transition table. So we have the current state. Then we have what happens if we get a zero, what happens if we get a one. And whenever I say what happens, what I mean is where are we headed? What is the destination from the current state? What's the next state? Well, our first state, we're going to just take a look at Q0. And in fact, let's just go ahead and list all three of these. So we've got Q1 and Q2. Now these guys, each one of those has a destination based on a zero or a one. Now, if we get a zero while we're in Q0, we are headed to state Q1. If we are in state Q0 and we get a one, there's no transition. Nothing is defined here. This is one of the elements that makes it so that our state machine is non-deterministic yet. And so we put the empty set there. Don't have a destination. Let's take a look at Q1. When we're in Q1, when we get a zero, very definite. There's one transition that identifies the fact that we are going to Q2. If we get a one while we are in state Q, Q1, if we get a one, not as exact, not as definite. So we could be coming back to Q1 in the case of getting more elements from the string of ones, or we could be going to Q2. So what we actually have here is a set, all right? We could be going to Q1 or Q2. Now in Q2, which is our final state, and in our state transition table, we're gonna identify with an asterisk, if we are in Q2, what happens if we get a zero? What happens if we get a one? Well, there are no transitions out of it. So once again, we are gonna define that, or that, you know, show that state using the empty set. Well, that was non-deterministic. Let's take the steps to see if we can convert that non-deterministic one to a deterministic finite automata. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use, we're gonna leave this state diagram up here and create a new state transition table that represents the deterministic one. 
Now remember, our state machines are defined by a number of things. One of the things it's defined by is this set Q. And the set Q is the set of all of the states. So in the case of our non-deterministic state machine, we've got Q is equal to Q0, comma, Q1, comma, Q2. That's all of the states, right? In the case of our deterministic one, the one that we're converting to, I'm gonna create a new set of states. So it's gonna be based on the set of states we generated for the non-deterministic one, but it's gonna have a slightly different organization or grouping of these states. Now, the very first state that we add to Q0, Q prime is always Q0. We always put Q0 our initial state. And since there's only one initial state, there can be multiple of these accepting states, but there's always one initial state. We put that one initial state, that's the first member of Q prime. Well, that first step was deceptively easy. This next set of steps is actually a loop. It's this, this iteration based on any time we create a state that is added to Q prime, we have to add its row in the next state transition table. So I'm gonna make my next state transition table. There's my current state. There's what happens with a zero. There's what happens with a one. We're gonna go ahead and put our initial state Q0, put a little arrow there to identify that as our initial state. Now, what's gonna happen is as we generate states, each one of these columns is going to get a set of states. It may be the empty set, it may have one say, a state, a destination state, it may have five destination states. But we are gonna group that together as a set and that set is going to become an element of Q prime. So. Q, uh, Q0, whenever we're in Q0, when we get a zero, we go to Q1, all right? So Q1, that's a new state, we're adding it to Q prime. If we are in Q0 and we get a one, well, remember from our previous state diagram, we, if we were in Q0 and got a one, we don't know where we're going, so that's actually going to be the empty set. Now, it turns out that the empty set is also going to be an element of Q prime. So we now have three states. And in fact, all of these are going to become elements in our table. Let's see what the next state is. So we come over here, we've got Q1. We've added Q1 to, Q prime, to, to our set of states. So we need to add a row for it in our transition table. So Q1, what happens whenever we're in Q1 and we get a zero? Well, if we're in Q1 and we get a zero, we go to Q2. Now, Q2 is not actually a member yet of our list of states here, so we go ahead and add Q2 to it. So now we actually have four states. We're starting to grow for a few more states than we have in our non-deterministic finite automata up there. Now, if we are in Q1 and we get a one, we could go to Q1 or we could go to Q2. So this is actually going to be a set that represents a state. So we go to, if we're in Q1 and we get a one, we go to either Q1 or we go to Q2. So it turns out that Q1, Q2, that's actually a state two for our Q prime here. So we have Q1, Q2, that's actually a state. Wow, we've now got five states for our deterministic uh, finite automata. Uh, and all of them are represented with just these two rows, or all of them are present as part of these two rows of the next state transition table. Let's pick one of these guys. How about Q2? Let's say what happens if we're in Q2. Well, if we're in Q2 and we get a zero, we don't have a transition for that. So that's the empty state. Now we, an empty set. So we also have the empty set already in our set of states for the deterministic version of this state, a finite state automata. So we don't have anything to add. If we're in Q2 and we get a one, well, we also don't have a destination. So we also have a transition to the empty set. Let's see, let's pick another one. How about let's do, uh, let's just go ahead and do, figure out what happens for Q1 and Q2 whenever we get 
a zero or a one. This is where things become, well, not necessarily complicated. You just have to be aware of exactly what our destination is from this newly created state. The newly created state is really the union of Q1 and Q2. So what you wanna do is say, where am I headed when I get a zero if I'm in Q1 or if I'm in Q2? So it's the union of those two. So if I'm in Q1, and I get a zero, I'm headed to Q2. So Q2 is gonna be one of the elements of the set that is gonna be our destination here. If I'm in Q2 and I get a zero, I'm headed to the empty set. So what's the union of Q2 with the empty set? Turns out it's just Q2, all right? Now we already have Q2 in our set up here, so Q2 we don't need to add. What happens if we're in Q1 or Q2 and we get a one, where are we headed? Well, if I'm in Q1 and I get a one, I'm headed to either Q1 or Q2. So there's two elements of this destination set, Q1, Q2. If I'm in Q2 and I get a one, I'm headed to the empty set, right? I don't have, I don't have a destination there. So Q, the union of all the destinations for Q1, or Q2, whenever I have a one, is Q1, Q2. Already a member of our next, of our, of our states for the deterministic uh, finite automata, so I don't have anything else to add. Do I have all my states? Well, I've got Q0, I've got Q1, I've got Q2, I've got Q1, Q2. What I don't have is the empty set. So I also have to define that because it is one of the elements of our states. When, I have, when I'm in the empty set state, when I'm in the empty set state, yes, whenever I'm nowhere, right? No, whenever I'm in the, whenever I'm in no state, where am I headed if I get a zero? I'm headed nowhere. If I'm in nowhere, I'm in the empty set and I get a one, I'm also headed to nowhere. Now from our non-deterministic finite automata, you can see we have this one accepting state. Well, looking through this list of states here, we're gonna identify every row that has a state that contains this accepting state from the original non-deterministic one. Well, Q2 is here and Q2 is contained in this set, so those two are both accepting states. None of the other states are accepting states. So we've got all of our states here in Q prime, and the other thing we've got is this state transition table, well, it defines everything that we need in order to determine what our deterministic finite automata state diagram should look like. We've got the list of states, we've got the input alphabet, we've got the initial state, we've got the accepting state, and we've got all the transitions. We can now get rid of this guy because we don't need it as a reference anymore. Now we're gonna make our deterministic one. Now, in order to make things a little bit clearer or a little bit simpler whenever I'm drawing my state diagram, I'm gonna clean this up by, instead of using sets to represent each one of the states, instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use new state names. Now, to keep things simple, I'm gonna go with a different set of letters. So Q0, I am just gonna represent with A. Uh, Q1, let's see, Q1 is there and there. There's no other sets where I see Q1, so that I'm gonna call B. Let's see, how about Q2? Q2 is here, here, and here. That I'm gonna represent with C, okay? And then this wonderful large set Q1, Q2, this one I'm gonna represent with D. So let's go ahead and clear these three guys up. All right, not as clean as I'd like it to be, but we've got D, D, and D. And then the empty set. The empty set appears in a lot of places. So we're gonna clear those two lines, those two elements, those two elements, that row and that. And now we have E, 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 
E and E. All right, so there's our new state diagram, or excuse me, my new state transition table. What does the state diagram look like? Our initial state is state A. So we put our arrow in there to indicate that A is our initial state. If we get a zero, we've got a transition coming out of A that goes to B. So a zero will take us to B. A one, when we're in state A, will take us to state E. Now the key is, is that our input alphabet has two elements. It's the binary alphabet. It's either a zero or a one. So our, our, the number of transitions coming out of A need to account for both the zero and the one, and it does. But B and E, they still need to have zero and one transitions defined for them. Let's go ahead and do B. So if we're in B and we get a zero, we're going to state C. All right, so that's a zero. If we're in state B and we get a one, we're going to state D. So we get state D here if we get a one. So now coming out of B, I have both my zero and my one, but these three states, C, D, E, we don't have our zero and one transitions out of them yet. Now let's take a look at C. C is an accepting state. So we put a double circle around that one to show in our diagram that it's a, a, an accepting state. If we are in C and we get a zero, then we go to E. All right, that's for a zero. If we're in state C and we get a one, we also go to state E. So from C, we now know what happens if we get a zero or a one. Now let's take a look at D. If I'm in D and I get a zero, then that means I'm headed up to state C. If I'm in D and I get a one, then I stay in state D. Notice also that D is an accepting state, so we put the double circle around that one too. And then lastly, if I'm in state E, so I've got zero and one coming out of D, I've got zero and one coming out of C, zero and one coming out of B, zero and one coming out of A, E is the last state. If I'm in E and I get a zero, or if I get a one, I'm headed back to state E. Does this make sense? Well, remember, we had a couple of, of examples for things that adhere to this regular expression. If it began and ended with a zero with any number of ones in between it, that was an element of the regular set for this regular expression. So we have zero, zero, we go to C. I have zero, one, zero, that takes me to C. I've got a zero, one, one, zero. And then I've got zero, one, 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 zero. And so all of those things take me to, this one right here takes me to C. Now, if I get a, a, another zero here, that's going to take me to the non-accepting state of state E. If I get a one, same thing happens. I come, I fall out of the accepting state. Now, what about the other way? What about if we end in a one instead of ending in a zero? Well, that was, let's see, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, one, 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 zero, one, 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 and so forth. So what you're looking at here is a zero, followed by a one, I'm in accepting state. Zero, followed by a one, followed by another one, I'm in the accepting state. Zero, followed by a one, followed by a lot of ones. I stay in the accepting state uh, D. So this one really is the accepting state C. This one really ends in the accepting state D. If I get a zero after I'm in D, I go over to C. If I get anything else, then I'm then I fall out. So this does look like an appropriate an appropriate deterministic finite automata for the non-deterministic one that we started out with.